can do what you want, but in about 15 minutes, The Walking Dead is coming on. I can do whatever I want. I'm gonna make out. Welcome back to another edition of Cooking Chris's Dishes, where me, I, the good old boy, cook different recipes from RecipesThatCrock.com. Today, we're going to make you some breakfast. It is a crock pot cinnamon roll French toast casserole. That is a mouthful to say, and it is a mouthful to eat, and it's a mouthful you will love. And it goes a little something like this. You need two things of... Cinnamon rolls. So we're using the Pillsbury cinnamon rolls, Cinnabon cinnamon rolls with icing. Um, you ever watch those videos where they do the unboxing, like they take something out of the package they just bought, and everybody likes watching those videos because they're they're like so excited and everything. We're gonna do it now. See how excited you get. Ready? Unboxing. Let me pull the tab. Ooh. Pull out the cinnamon rolls. Uh, and that's what it looks like. So you need two of these. You also need three quarters cup of chopped pecans. You need, I can't see because of my glasses, two thirds cup of packed brown sugar. Here's the brown sugar. I've already got it in there packed. Uh, one half cup of melted butter. A half cup is equal to one stick or two half sticks. I swear that's as far as we get into common core math. I'm gonna go ahead and toss this in the microwave now so it will melt down while I'm telling you about the rest of your ingredients. Two half sticks going in the microwave. I'll pull out the cookies. We'll go about 20 seconds there. Hopefully I was doesn't. not a part of the making of those cookies. <laughs> I was a part of making them and eating them. Uh, let's go about 10 more seconds here. While we're doing that, I'll tell you that we also need a one half cup of non-fat plain Greek yogurt. Not vanilla Greek yogurt, plain Greek yogurt. Half cup of that. Butter's melted. If you don't have Greek yogurt, you could always use sour cream. Same amount? Yes. Don't use regular yogurt, though. That's something different. Don't use regular yogurt. Use sour cream if you can't find Greek yogurt, but if you can find Greek yogurt, get regular Greek yogurt, don't get vanilla Greek yogurt. Thank Whatever you. you use, don't use mayonnaise. And so you need a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and I'll go back and get my butter. Actually, my butter could go for another round in the microwave. But while we're waiting on the butter, we'll go ahead and toss these ingredients, except for your cinnamon rolls, toss your ingredients it's in a bowl. A bowl that we're going to see soon. So Woo! right here, right here. Well, there's so much stuff in the way. <laughs> Brown sugar. There we go. Butter. We'll get to that in a minute. Greek yogurt. I just got Greek yogurt <laughs> onto the nuts. Oh, nuts. <laughs> Why is everybody always peek on on me? Oh. All right, so Greek yogurt. Or I did pecans, paper towel <laughs> to clean up the mess. I don't know about y'all, but I'm messy in the kitchen. If you're not, I don't know how you do it. But if you are, you could always comment in the comments down below and tell me about your messiest experience in the kitchen. Let's go ahead and clean up some of this real quick. Get it out of the way. All right. And that was one teaspoon of Miller. Woo, there we go. Slightly more than a teaspoon, but you know, I, I think one thing we're trying to prove to you is you don't have to be perfect in the kitchen. I know I'm not. I'm good at it. I'm just not perfect. All right. Don't Butter pour is that directly melted. On, on the Greek yogurt. Huh? Don't pour that directly on the Greek yogurt. Why? Because it could have a reaction. Just pour it to the side. Sorry. Okay. We're going to pour 
not on your Greek yogurt because it'll have some kind of a reaction. I just don't want it to like. Is it gonna explode? No. Because that will scare the people from making it. <laughs> Actually, if you pour it on the Greek yogurt, it's hot butter. Pour hot stuff on anything that's a dairy; oh, it'll probably yeah. curdle. You don't want yeah. that. That's not good stuff. Yeah. So to the side, just you could put the butter in first had you melted it first, but I didn't melt it till later. But anywho, so we've got our chopped pecans, our brown sugar, our butter our non-fat plain Greek yogurt or sour cream if you can't find Greek yogurt. We have our teaspoon of vanilla all in a bowl. And according to the instructions from the boss, it says combine all the ingredients except for the cinnamon rolls in a large bowl. So now we shall combine. Now everything's all combined. I don't think we'll need this again, so. Mm. Good thing. That's gonna taste good tomorrow. <laughs> Actually, All right. Tonight. Tonight. Whenever you eat it. So, I always think it's always fun to bust open a can of biscuits. Yeah, that's right. So, what we're gonna do with our biscuits? Yes, my counter is clean. So we're going to take our biscuits. Your cinnamon rolls. My cinnamon rolls, rather. Yeah, biscuits. <laughs> Sorry. It's a redneck term. Anything could be biscuits in my house. All right. You take your cinnamon rolls. Let me get the other one opened up here. I don't know about you, but ever since I was a kid, any time I was going to open up one of these, I still kind of flinch when it pops open. Like bis uh, biscuits or rolls, like they're going to attack you or something. Take these out of gather. All right. Now, save these. Don't get rid of these. These will come into play at the end. Don't throw those away. Don't eat I'm them. Telling my wife, I'm not going to eat them. I will later when I'm done with them. When we get done with the casserole and it's been cooked. You'll take your cinnamon, or you'll take your icing and drizzle it over your casserole. So you want to take clean cooking shears. You could quarter them on a cutting board. My cutting board's in the dishwasher. So I'm going to take clean cooking shears, and I am going to quarter them. So one, two cuts makes four. One, two, and in the essence of saving time. I'm gonna do this a little faster. You ready? Here we go. Okay, so now all of our cinnamon rolls have been quartered up and I just realized that I could have used that spatula again because now we gotta mix everything up. So I'm gonna go right over there, stay there. Here I am with a new spatula. And we want to mix this up, right? Make sure you read your instructions. Your laptop just went dark, there we go. Spread us uh, the uh, quarter cinnamon rolls and toss in mixture. That doesn't just mean quarter them up and toss them in. Give them a toss. Get them coated if you will. Try not to fling them all over your kitchen. You know, just get them coated. Make everything a little more even. Give everything a little harmony. Why do I sound so philosophical while I'm mixing up cinnamon rolls? Okay, so it's all mixed up. I'm gonna show it over here to you so you know what it looks like. It looks just like that. When you, when you toss it all together, it gets everything covered up. Smothered, as they all call it in the South. And now, I need to coat the bottom of my crock pot, or my casserole crock, with some cooking spray that my lovely assistant is going to get from the pantry right now. That's deodorant. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> we don't put deodorant in our pantry. That's gross. There we go. Cooking spray. I'm going to do this away from my semi-expensive camera.
just like that. Here you go. Thank you, lovely assistant. All right, and now we will pour our mixture into our six quart slow cooker, or we are using a casserole crock. This is actually about a three and a half quart casserole, but what do biscuits do in the oven? They expand, they grow. That's so what they're gonna do rolls. here. So do, I said biscuits again. <laughs> this is gonna be just like the rum chata, horchata <laughs> ordeal. Some crock pot horchata caramel dip. No! Dip. say we're cooking cinnamon roll <laughs> casserole today not biscuits lord help me so your cinnamon rolls will expand what that's what they're going to do in this that's why this thing is kind of deep kind of wide if you don't have a casserole crock try to use a six quart crock that way when it expands it won't like so it cooks evenly it cooks evenly and it won't like leave out of your otherwise little you bit might of have pot. a doughy center yeah, you don't want to have a doughy center, right? right? You don't want to have a doughy center. No. I have a doughy center. <laughs> okay, so we're going to put this in our casserole crock. And yes, you will be baking this casserole in a slow cooker. Now, in an oven, when you bake something, it bakes from the top and the bottom. Mostly from the top though, unless you're doing, I guess, convection, then it's gonna do everything. But when you, when you bake here, you're not gonna get any heat on the top other than when you cover it, but it's like residual heat. There's not actually a heating element that's hitting your, your casserole. So all your golden crispiness, anything that's gonna, that's gonna brown up is gonna be on the sides and on the bottom. So when you check in on this, don't freak out when it doesn't look brown on top because it's not gonna so now that's what it looks like now this thing says to cook it on low for two and a half to three hours until the sides are golden and the rolls have set so i will put my lid on put a lid on it so and you may want to put a paper towel under the lid yes to catch any liquid right Tell me to do that before. Well, so, the casserole crock sometimes catches more liquid even than a regular slow cooker. So, so it's not a wet mess on top when you get done. You the go. paper towel right on top will capture some of your moisture. And we will set it for... <laughs> oh, tell me you don't do the same thing. You start to do something and you go back and revert Absolutely. to the recipe. That's what I'm doing. Cook it on low for two and a half to three hours. So, low. And I'm gonna set it for three hours here. I'm gonna set it for three hours. Hopefully it turns on. But I'm also gonna wanna check this in, what, about 215, 220. Not to, you know, don't wait till the last part of the timer to check it. You're gonna wanna check it beforehand because again, some slow cookers cook slower than others. Some slow cookers cook faster than others. Depends on the heating element. They're all different. Kind of like you and me. We're all different. But with that being said, I'm going to set another timer for, I'm going to set it for two hours and 20 minutes and come back and check. Actually, I'm going to do 215. So Alexa, please set a timer for two hours and 15 minutes from now. Two hours and 15 minutes. Okay, so we'll come back in 2.15 and see how this is doing. I imagine I'm probably going to want it to cook it a little bit longer, but again, I also don't know this crock pot too well, so we will check it out in 2.15 and see what it looks like. All right, so it's been about two hours and 20 minutes. Um, I was supposed to check this in two hours and 15, but we were watching The Talking Dead. Did anybody watch? The Walking Dead's... No spoilers. ...return back from um, this season. 
Holy cow, it was good. I'm not sure exactly when this little episode of ours is going to air. But uh, if you saw The Walking Dead tonight, if you watch The Walking Dead, do you watch The Walking Dead? If you don't, you really should. It's a good show. But anyway, so hopefully I didn't didn't burn our biscuits. Just kidding. Oh I knew that was coming. <laughs> now, hopefully we didn't burn our cinnamon roll casserole. But I want to show you, and I'll show you from this camera. I'll blow this up in the video. But if you could see just how much moisture is on top of the lid here of our crock pot casserole dish. I'm going to carefully take this off so it doesn't dump. Now watch the trash can. That's a lot of liquid coming off of there. Which is why, for the wisdom of my wife, it's hot. I should use my glove. Why you use a paper towel on top to collect moisture. Uh -oh. And I did. And for now, it's looking like the outsides are getting pretty brown. The inside is still really doughy. Darling, you are the expert in this. What should we do? Uh, put another paper towel down, cook for probably another half an hour. All right. Try not I'm to gonna, get it down on. I'm going to double up on the paper towel, too, to collect more moisture. Yeah, don't get it down and on. And by the timer she said a half hour there's actually 38 real minutes left in this because remember I said I was gonna check it early to check out my crock I'm gonna burn myself either way it goes here uh, I got you some blood I know I know so I'm gonna take this and I'll stretch the paper towel like that try to find there it is Let's like that and we will wait another half an hour or 38 minutes or so just to see if this thing cooks up in the middle. We'll be back in 38 minutes. So it's been about 15 more minutes and we are gonna check and see how we did and to make sure that I don't burn myself anymore. I'm using my Muppet gloves. So we'll take off the lid and you can see there's a whole bunch more moisture that came out. I'm going to get the paper towel off here now, says my director. And a little bit of moisture on the paper towel. Let me take off. Let me use a new paper towel if we need to. Take off the gloves. And you can see on the outside, especially this edge right here, is a lot browner than it is here. In the middle, it's still pretty doughy. On the outside, it's starting to firm up like it should. But one thing that Chris tells me, and all of her teaching of me how to do this is especially breakfast meals can be very finicky touchy high maintenance. high maintenance that's the words and baking in general and so one thing you can do as you can see the heating element is hotter on this side than it is on this side you can go what do you do what do you do you put on your fireman gloves <laughs> your muppet gloves Fergie, Fergie and pull out the pot and rotate it so that the heating element, the hotter e heating element is now on this side. So now I'm gonna set this for another, we say about 15 minutes? Yeah, let's do it with the lid off, get that center. And one thing I learned, this crock pot will not do more or we'll not do less than 30 minutes. So, Alexa, please set a timer for 15 minutes. Setting timer, 15 minutes. Okay. Starting now. So, we're going to check this again in 15 minutes, and we're going to leave the lid off. That way, all the moisture gets out of there, and it stays dry. So, in 15 more minutes, we'll come back and check this and see how the center is doing. All right, so it has been another 15 minutes for our cinnamon roll French toast casserole. And you can see, like I said, the, the edges over here are really brown, and the edges over here, a little bit brown on the outside. It's done. If you look towards the middle where it was really doughy, it's a little softer on the middle, but it is done. It's like the center of a cinnamon roll. There you go, like the center of a cinnamon. You know how those taste? A little chewy, which is good. I like it this way. If you don't like it this way, you might cook a little longer. If you wanna, if you wanna relent, 
put it in the oven on 350 for probably no more than five, seven minutes, and it'll cook up a little bit more. But frankly, I like mine a little doughy, just like my wife loves me. So next thing you do is you can either take a spatula, dump this on there and slather it out, or you can snoop dog it. Mikey, what do you mean by snoop dogging it? Take your... Tell really bad jokes? Hey. Oh, no, Snoop doesn't do that. No, Snoop doesn't do that, nor do I. <laughs> what you do is microwave and heat up. I would take it out of the little plastic container and put it in something maybe a little fancy, like a little fancy glass like this. And you could put it on there for drizzle. You know what I mean, Snoop Dogg? And put it on there just like that. Look how pretty that is. Just like that. Kind of looks like a whole bunch of dollar signs. That's what Snoop sees every day. <laughs> so, anyway, I didn't, I didn't that's how. You were such the fan. That's how you make it pretty. And that's how you don't. You just kind of put it on there. But you put. I, I left this out, by the way, all day on the counter so that it would get the room temperature. Makes it a lot easier oh, to slather oh. it on there. I'm getting oh oh oops from the. Boss. <laughs> you need to spread that out a little bit. Oh, I'm going to. I'm just putting it on there. And and then smear it. That's right, you. Smear it. Slather. Um, coat. Which I don't know. I'm trying to think of what other words I can say here to tell you what I'm doing. But I'm putting on the icing. And kind of pull that away where I pulled it right there. we go just like that and it all melts down into the casserole so now get rid of this time for the test I'm gonna get mine with part of that doughy part right there can't measure very well with my spatula let's get that out of there uh, yeah. And on to the pretty plate. Just like that. Grab myself a fork. And we'll try it. Here's the doughy side. I could eat that for breakfast. Mm. Or dessert. Or dessert. Lunch. Midnight snack. Here's the outside edge of it. Which is like the top if you were to bake it. Find the outside of a cinnabon. Mm -hmm. mm. The nuts, the pecans in it. The Greek yogurt. I'm trying to explain what the Greek yogurt does. Keeps the moisture in. It adds body to it, I guess is the best way I could say it. Um, the one way this is a little unique from some of the other cinnamon roll type recipes on the site is the leftovers of this. <laughs> if there's going to be any. I don't think I'm going to be. Are really good. Where the others are more eat it while it's hot. Mm-hmm. So, when I plate stuff, when I'm cooking our stuff, I usually take a couple bites, tell you what I taste, tell you what I like about it, maybe what I don't like about it. There's nothing I don't like about this. I'm not going to take more than a couple of bites. I'm going to eat this entire thing while I talk to you. Because <laughs> you're afraid that Addie's going to come take it from me. Well, she's going to have to fight me to get more to get any of this. But, um, no, it's really good. We it reminds also make me a an little bit. Cranberry version of this. Right. Chris makes an orange cranberry version. This is the French toast version. There's an original version. This is my favorite. It is so, so good. It's crispy on the outside where it's browned up on the edges like the outside of a Cinnabon. It's doughy from the inside center. You know, it's got a little chew to it, which is really good, like the inside of a Cinnabon. The, the icing, of course, you put icing on anything that's going to taste good. Um, but the pecans are really nice. 
you can taste the vanilla that you put in there and the brown sugar when it gets in contact with the heat from the crock pot or the, the casserole dish, all that brown sugar on the outside forms a little bit of a candy, a candied crust around it. And that's fantastic. The only thing missing is a great big glass of milk. And I promise you, when we're done taping, I'm probably gonna get another couple spoonfuls of this and a great big glass of milk. So I don't wanna how I don't want you to hold me any any more from this, so <laughs> Again, we want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, you, you can also check this recipe out in hard copy on RecipesThatCrock.com. And you can check out more cooking videos, tunes, all kinds of stuff uh, by subscribing to my channel, which is YouTube.com slash MikeyGood. You can also like us on Facebook. You can find us at RecipesThatCrock on Facebook, as well as Good Old Tunes by Good Old Boy on Facebook. Give us a like. Give us a suggestion of other things that you want to see us cook on here. And uh, we'll check them out. And we'll find the, the most popular ones. And we will do them. We thank you guys again for watching. Now leave me alone. I'm going to finish this and get another plate full. Bye. Hey, Addy. Hey, Addy. You can't have any. <laughs>